Hello, my name is Angel Fernando. I am going to teach you how to pin butterflies. We often get many requests from newcomers and enthusiasts to the butterfly hobby that they want to learn how to be able to pin in an efficient way with minimizing damage to the specimen. So today we're going to attempt something fairly challenging. I'm going to be uh, taking a specimen that's already damaged. The head is separated from the body and the antennas are separated from the head and I'm going to be reassembling it and pinning it so that you can see how it's all done from start to finish. So the butterfly is, came in this little envelope here and I put it into a humid box. Now this humid box has a mixture of pine salt, which is an antifungal agent, as well as water. I've mixed it together and the way it looks is uh, like this. I've got a piece of styrofoam in the water to... So what we're going to do now is take the specimen out of the human box. It's, the specimen has been in here for a little over a day. I've kept the head uh, that was dislodged in here as well because we're going to need it. So to make sure that the specimen has been properly hydrated, you have to first check to see if the specimen can be moved. I take my fingers and I gently squeeze and you can see how the wings open and close. That gives us a good indication that the butterfly has been properly hydrated. The next thing I'm going to do is, with my fingers, I'm going to take the two costal margins here very gently and with this left hand I'm going to be moving it downwards just to see the flexibility of the wing. I'm not actually moving this top four wings, I'm moving the body. Next with my forceps, I place it on the inside and I gently try to open it up. Now you can see the ease at which it opens. This tells us that it's completely hydrated. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a pin directly into the thorax. I want the pin to be perpendicular to the body. I'm going to place the, the specimen into the groove. I've already preset the, the groove uh, to the proper width, width so that I'm able to place a specimen easily within there. Next I'm going to be taking two pieces of tracing paper. Some people like to use wax paper. I don't recommend it because wax paper can uh, pick up scales and remove the coloring from the wings if we are not careful. So I'm just going to s secure the two pieces of tracing paper That's from the top as such. And this will give me the the necessary base to be able to start the process of spreading the specimen. The whole goal of spreading the specimen is to make sure that it dries in a symmetrical way that allows for all wings to be visible. It also must be as aesthetically pleasing if you want to frame it. So let's take a look here at what we're going to be doing next. I'm going to be taking the piece of tracing paper up. Now with my forceps I'm going to be going inside and grabbing the costal vein like this applying very little pressure and sliding it up so that the right forewing should be perpendicular to the body and then I gently slide it out place this tracing paper on back on top and I hold with my thumb securely in place to make sure that the wing doesn't come back down now with these colored pinheads I'm going to be putting the pins around the specimen to prevent the wing from going down. Once that wing is secure, now I'm going to go to this wing and secure it. Again the same thing, I go to the costal margin, I push it up as such, and then I, get, I have a good look to see if both wings are perpendicular to the body, which they are, and now I'm going to secure them into place. This is very important that you do each step as I've shown it because if you try to make one side symmetrical and match the other side, the muscles can pull depending on the specimen and the specimen will no longer be symmetrical. Now what we must do is make sure the hind wings are properly set in place. What we need to do is we need to move them up so that they have a tiny little V that we form between the forewing and the hind wing. 
So I'm going to start with the right side because that's what I'm comfortable with. Again, I lift the tracing paper up. I put my forceps in. Now I go to the main vein. This dark line here happens to be the main vein. I use very, very little force. I don't want to penetrate the wing or damage the specimen in any way. And then I push the wing up to the point where I think it's going to look good. And then I gently release it, moving the paper back. I apply the force onto the paper while not touching the wings. And then I secure the hind wing using these colored pinheads. Now the point of this stage here is now we need to get the left wing to match the right wing. This distance on the, this side here must be equal to this side here. Now before I secure it in place, I hold it up and I want to see whether I've met the requirement of it being symmetrical. And it looks pretty good. So we'll secure it in place. These veins on either side generally should be equal in its appearance. If they are, theoretically the specimen should be symmetrical. Sometimes you'll have aberrations where the wing shapes are not equal on each side and you can't use this method to make it symmetrical. But for the vast majority of butterflies, this is the technique you should use. Now before we continue to fix the specimen, because this is a bird wing, we need to uh, address the issue of the scent patches on the male. So to make it look proper, what we're going to do is we're going to fold the scent patches down, exposing the black pigmentation. So I've taken a piece of tracing paper, cut it to a smaller size, and what we're going to do is we're just going to, I'm going to use the other side of the forceps, not the sharp side, and I'm just going to gently place some pressure to get it to fold over. And then we're using the force of the tracing paper, I press it down and then I immediately secure that into place without penetrating the wings. That way when it dries, these scent patches will be completely uh, dried as well, nice and flat. And then with the, the right side, I press it down, again noticing I'm not damaging the specimen in any way, and I secure this side in place. This is a very important part in mounting such kind of a butterfly because when you want to see the finished product you want to have it so that it looks quite elegant. Now the abdomen during the humidification process it'll become very soft and as you're pinning the specimen it's going to veer to the left or right. I want it to be exactly perpendicular to the thorax, sorry, uh, perpendicular to the wings. I'm going to then just slightly adjust it so that the body is in the middle So now I'm going to hold it up so that you can see how the specimen is properly pinned. It is symmetrical and I have not penetrated the wing once or caused any scratches with my forceps. Now we're ready to do some more fine tuning like attaching the head to the thorax. At this point I'm going to use some insect repair adhesive. Show it. I let uh, one of my bottles, I let it dry out quite a bit so that it's very viscous, so it's not runny. And I, the reason I do that is because I take a pin as such, and I take the really thick, gluey material, and I put it where the head is to be attached. This is really important because if this were runny, obviously the, it would drip onto the, the wings and it would be damaged permanently. Um, I also need it to be nice and thick so that the glue sticks to the body parts without any difficulty. So now I've removed the head from the human box and now I'm going to apply a dab of glue 
Not much. As you can see, it's very little. With repairing butterflies, less is always more. You don't want anything to show when it's fully dried. So now I've attached the head back and uh, the antenna is still rehydrated. It's not dry. So I can put the antenna down to the position that I wanted. That's the first antenna. So now you can see that the specimen is completely pinned. It's now ready to be dried. Uh, it'll dry for about two days and then you can remove the pins and put it in your display case. And for those of you that are curious, this butterfly's name is Ornithoptera croesus wallacei. It's from Mandiola, Mandiola Islands in, in Indonesia.